Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. Are you a singer-songwriter with one of these or one of these and you want to record your song ideas, your demos, your tracks, but you have no gear? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use a pair of earbuds and your iPhone or iPad to record a singer-songwriter demo. Let's go. Okay, I know what you may be thinking. Don't I need an interface, some cabling, some sort of gear to do this recording? Well, of course, if you want the best quality sound, you're gonna to need to use some equipment. I've got plenty of videos that you can check out on the channel about how to do that. But a lot of people starting out on GarageBand on iPhone or iPad have literally just got their device and a pair of headphones and they wanna get started. So this video is for you. If you get good at it and if you wanna get high quality sound, by all means you can jump into the equipment at a later stage, but there's nothing stopping you getting started right now with nothing more than your device and a pair of headphones. Okay, so here we are. I have my guitar, I have my voice, I have my pair of cheap earbuds. These are $10 ones I got on eBay. You can use your earbuds that came with your uh, iPad or iPhone. Don't use, well you can use, but for this video I'm not using earbuds that have a microphone built in. That will use that microphone if you plug that in. So I don't want that, I wanna use the internal microphone on the iPad for this example. But you can do exactly the same thing using your microphone on your uh, headset if you want to do that and feel free to explore and experiment that's what this is all about so let's get started by creating a new track here in GarageBand so I'll go to create document and I'm going to grab the instrument here in the audio recorder so at the moment it's got my nice room set up so here is my iPad and I'm going to plug in my pair of very cheap earbuds so that I can hear. And the reason you need a pair of headphones is that you wanna be able to hear the audio. It doesn't matter so much on the first track, but on the second track, you will definitely need to be able to hear. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to record my guitar and then I'm gonna record my vocals. And I'm gonna do them on two separate tracks. I'm gonna use multi-track recording to do this. The other reason you need a pair of headphones is to hear the metronome. So you want to, or in most cases, you wanna to record to a click track. You don't have to record to a click track, but it does make life easier when you need to start doing any editing or adding in of more instruments later down the track. So I'm going to set a metronome here and I'm going to plug in and plug in my headphones into my face. Okay, my headphones are in. You can see that the microphone is already picking up my voice here, but I can't hear it through the iPad. I've got to hit this monitor button in the bottom right. And now you will hear that all this processing is on my voice. So I don't want this to record my voice. This is going to be for the guitar, but uh, I'll play a guitar. So whilst the reverb and the compression and the room sound on there don't sound great with my voice, once I play my guitar, it sounds okay. So I'm gonna use the default settings here for now, but then I'll show you how that we can tweak this after the fact, if we want to do that and change the sound. So we're going to turn out output up a little bit just so that I can hear the guitar a bit more and that's sounding good. What we need to do now is set up our track so what we're going to do to do that is go the little plus button in the top right here and we've got eight bars but automatic set on here so you want to make sure you have automatic set to the song length so that when you're recording your first take of just your guitar or your vocal or whatever it is then it's going to just record however many tracks. If that's set to eight bars, it's gonna cut off after eight bars and that's not gonna be a lot of fun. The other thing that we wanna do is go into our settings, so our settings option up here, and we need to get our tempo ready. So we're gonna tap on tempo, and for this song, it's gonna be a do, do, do. So we did a tap in a tempo, and it seems to be around about 90. So we'll have it at 90 and go back out of there. Actually, while we're in there, let's actually change the key signature. So this song is in G major. So we're going to change that right now to G major so that if we add any virtual instruments down the track that we want to use the chords for, then it's already set and ready to go. Now, the other thing that we want to do here in settings is go into our metronome and count in. We've got the count in and the visual count in on, which gives us one bar before we start. We can choose the sound of our metronome. So I actually like the rim shot or hi-hat. Let's go hi-hat with this one now. So it's just a very subtle sort of tick sound. And 
you can hear we can put the metronome all the way up or we can put it almost inaudible. I try to have it not too loud because even wearing earphones like this, we can get some bleed even all the way over to the iPad microphone. It is possible to get some of the ticking sound which you don't want recorded in your track. So we're going to turn that off and we're about ready to record. So I'm in the recording position. The good thing about an iPad and an iPhone is they're kind of, the microphones in them are kind of designed to be recorded from in front because the camera is what you'd normally be using to record and you record sound through the iPhone or the iPad when you're recording through the camera, then if you just put yourself about the same distance you would if you were shooting a video, then you're gonna get a reasonably decent sound through the internal microphone. You can play around with positions and turn it side on or backwards or whatever. That's kind of part of the fun is experimenting. I've found this way works pretty well most of the time. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna hit record. I'm gonna play just my guitar part and then we'll stop the recording and we'll go on from there. Okay, there we go. We've recorded our first track. So if we go and hit the track icon here, we can now see that we have our guitar track recorded. And if anything, I've probably recorded the input a little bit too low, but the tip here is in digital recording, lower is better. We can always raise the volume up, but once we've clipped, if that's too high, we can't lower the volume down. And if we just listen to what it sounds like, you'll hear that it's actually sounding okay. So there you go, you got a little bit of reverb in that room sound in there. It's a little bit tinny, which we can fix up a little bit, which I'll show you with some EQ and settings in a moment. But for now, we've got our idea captured. We've got our guitar part captured. It's now time to move on to our vocals. So the guitar's away and I'm ready to add my vocal track here. I'm gonna hit the plus icon at the bottom here. And I'm gonna to go to voice this time. And when I turn my monitor on, ooh, we've got the beaming lead vocals and the problem with this, I'm just gonna turn the monitor off because that's very distracting. The problem with this is that it's got a lot of processing on the sound. So when I record the vocals here, I tend to either use the under fun, funnily enough, the clean vocals there, or the studio vocal I like the most is the punchy presence. And I'll go to the punchy presence preset, uh, turn the compressor a little bit down and some of this ambience down a little bit as well and just balance out the EQ. So that just gives me, when I turn that back on, that's, well, I knocked the ambience button there. So that just gives me a bit of a nicer sound. And again, all these settings can be changed after the fact. So really I want this to sound good for me to be able to hear my own voice while I'm singing the vocals. So without much further ado, I'm gonna hit the back button, go to the start of the track here. Uh, my input looks about right, my output looks about right. I'm going to turn the metronome off for this take because I don't really want to hear the metronome. I've got the rhythm of the guitar now. I can sing along to that. So let's hit record and record some vocals. Everybody talks too much they like to hear the sound of their own voice Echoing across the room and it does You have the right to think whatever you want You have the freedom to express I think we're done with your opinion There's consequences to your opinion already told us your opinion It might be wrong, but it's your opinion You know what's weird? 
sitting at a desk and singing at an iPad while a camera watches you. Try it one time. It's really weird. Okay, let's go back to our tracks. We've now got two tracks here. And you can see our vocals were recorded at a little bit of a higher level there. So that's something that I'll maybe fix up for next time. Push the input gain up for my guitar a little bit. But we'll slide out our mixer here. And let's just move to a part here where we've got guitar and vocals. And play back and hear what this sounds like. Yells out loud when there is emotion. But it doesn't mean a lot to anybody listening. Getting up on your high horse. Okay, so we've got our sound in there. What could we do to make it sound a little bit better? Uh, let's go into firstly the guitar and we'll tap on our settings here. We're gonna go to plugins and settings. So we've got uh, some track reverb and the visual EQ is set up here at the moment, but there's nothing on here. What I actually wanna do is add a little bit of EQ to this guitar to make it sound a little bit more realistic. It's a bit tinny and sharp at the moment. So we're going to go in to our visual EQ here. Actually, let's solo the track and let's go to our visual EQ and we'll play the guitar and I'm just gonna adjust some of this EQ just to see if we can make this guitar sound a bit nicer. Okay, so that's a very simple change that we've done there. All we've really done is pulled down the high frequencies and boosted a bit of a bit of the mid range and the low. The reason is that the microphone here, which is just on the iPad, is not giving us the bass response that we'd get from a normal microphone. So we just need to artificially take away a little bit of that extra treble, add in a little bit of bass and that's sounding a bit better. Let's now do the same with just a little bit of EQ on these vocals and see what that's gonna sound like. So we'll go into visual EQ. We'll hit play and we'll just take a little bit of a play with some of these and see what we can do. But there are consequences to everything, so don't look shocked when I call you on your. Should it be something that I need to say? Let me explain it to you in one more way. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's okay, you would have heard some background noise in there as well. Again, this microphone is not designed to just pick up one voice from here to here. So because I'm in a room, it's picking up part of the room. Because there's a road over there, it's picking up the road noises as well. So these are just some of the things you're going to deal with. But again, for having zero equipment, we're going to get the best sound we possibly can out of this iPad. So let's just have a listen to what just our EQ changes did to this track. Now let's uh, play from a spot here. Whatever you want, you have the freedom to express. But there are consequences to everything, so don't look sharp. Okay, so we have our two tracks here and we've balanced a little bit of the volume. We've added a little bit of EQ. We could then go in and spend more time looking at the settings. We could adjust reverb and we could do a whole bunch of mixing. And once again, there's some videos I have if you want to explore how to mix and how to use effects to change the sound. But the good news is that we now have a two track song in here. We've got our guitar, we've got our vocal. It's recorded on two separate tracks. As a songwriter, I've now got a demo here that I can share with people, they can hear the song. But the other good thing that we have is that we can add additional tracks. So if I want to come in here and start adding pianos or some string sections, some bass, any of these virtual instruments, a drummer, then I can actually go in and do that. So as a songwriter, I've now got the flexibility to add a whole bunch more tracks. And if you're interested in how you can do multi-track recordings, adding in drums and bass and extra guitars, then check out my videos down below where I do a recording of an entire EP uh, here in GarageBand and also my latest single, which I recorded on this exact iPad here in GarageBand, just using a digital interface to get a better quality of sound going into the iPad. So my verdict on this, for everyone that's asked me the question, can I record on an iPad or an iPhone with only a pair of headphones 
and the device itself. You absolutely can. The quality you're gonna get, as you heard there, is not gonna be top notch, but it's gonna be enough for you to get started with. And then if you start recording and you're really loving it and you really wanna get the next level of sound, then you can check out some of the devices and equipment that I suggest that you use, such as the Steinberg uh, range of interfaces that I recommend. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some encouragement that even without any gear, you can start recording today here in GarageBand on iOS. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>